As you can see, we're starting to get our test apparatus all set up. Uh, when I say test apparatus, there's been some comments, you know, how come you're doing this here, not in its final resting place, and all those types of similar comments. And those are all very good comments, and I'd like to address that now. The reason is that we're going to end up changing these. There's no doubt that they're going to change. I created this. This is essentially a wall. You know, that's what it is. It's a wall. And we have a lot of things that we have to do on this wall. We have to mount the brackets to it. Let me grab a bracket here. We have our mounting brackets that everything goes on that have to be mounted to the wall. And in just going through this exercise, and uh, it's what's called, what I call, and what others have called, operationalizing the design. You know, when you, you go to actually make it real to use it, you know, some of your design issues show up. In this case, uh, this really is great because the idea is I'll be able to measure, put a straight line in and drill, drill, you know, put screws in and hold it in place. And then you just simply mount that on. On the back side of it, there's two holes where the, uh, the tubing will be run so that you can mount this flush with the wall. Well, a, a few things showed up. One, tubing size a little bit bigger than this uh, diameter, so I had to change that. And two, uh, it really, this needs to be right here. So I actually need to pre create, uh, or I need to print nine of the version twos of this, which is exactly what we wanna do through this entire experience. What we're doing is, we're iteratively going through the design, which was thought through, and then it's like, oh, okay, well, I didn't think of this, uh, like the screw mounts. Uh, I put all these holes in here as to use less material, make it lighter, make it cheaper, but I did not put a, uh, a backing on the four corners, which is where you would want to secure it with screws. So, you know, it's a little stuff like that you got to figure out. We're going to mount uh, these nine, uh, which I need to print, what do we need, two more? Two more need to get printed, so that's going to take some time. I also need to print nine of these, so that's going to take some time because these ones that I, I've printed previously uh, will not work. In addition, uh, in case you're wondering what we're going to be using here, this system is designed to use a small uh, high pressure pump. Uh, in this case, I have a Baco uh, RV diaphragm pump, uh, which can actually pump some materials through it. It's, you're not going to worry about it getting clogged so much, uh, but it can pump uh, up to 160 PSI, uh, which is great. Uh, we're not going to need all that, but it can do it. And then we're going to actually be pumping that through, uh, I think it's a 55 micron filter here, so that we can actually uh, use the emitters without them getting clogged. And we're going to do some different testing on this. Uh, the parts that I, the pump and, and this filter are for our grow towers, but before I get too crazy, I'm actually going to use it so I can understand how this thing works better. Uh, and then uh, put everything all in, see how the emitters go. And we have our LED light mount here. Uh, another thing that you'll notice uh, is that it's up above. I'm not satisfied with that design. I've worked on a few different ideas because what I really want is the LED lights to be part of this box uh, or part of the faceplate or part of the cartridges, the magazines. As we go through this process to address the question of why are we not putting it in its final resting places because we're not sure what it's gonna end up looking like. We kinda gotta have some faith here. We gotta go, <laughs> I say all that. I, I can already hear the people look, you haven't thought through this. It's BS that I haven't thought about this. I've thought about it tremendously. The thing is, a single individual cannot think of everything. For me to say that I have thought of everything puts me on par with God, and that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> uh, that's why you have teams of people that do product design. So. What I'm expecting is as I go through and I put this all together, uh, similar to what I just described to you here, I will learn additional things and we will fix them. And then we will know how it all ends up and I will be able to uh, figure out how I want to put it into its final place. I certainly wouldn't want to take these up to the house right now and drill a hole through my tile and mount it to a wall only to discover that's a bad idea and it won't work. Right, And we have a lot of things we want to do for routing water. We want to make this as simple as possible for people to install. So creating this little test apparatus here, we have the uh, shrimp tank down below. Uh, we have just this fake wall that I've created here that we can mount things to and play with and see how it all 
all goes. We can also get some nice marketing pictures uh, as it starts to come to life. But the uh, shrimps are doing well, and you could use this system without shrimp. Uh, somebody brought that up as well, or without any aquaponics. You could just use a hydroponic solution, in which case I'm creating a reservoir that as these things drain, uh, here's a drain right here, they'll all drain down to a central uh, location. And then you could just make sure that reservoir maintains the hydroponic solution in it uh, and pump it back up. So you don't have to have aquaponics. You could use this with just hydroponics, uh, but you need a nutrient solution. I'm excited about this. I, I'm, I'm happy to make this progress. It is really warm outside today. Uh, whew, 90 degrees, I think, is what we reached Fahrenheit. And uh, I think it's time for me to go fall into the pool. I, it's just, I'm just sweating. <laughs> the air conditioner in the office is working really well, though. It's keeping it down at a manageable temperature, especially when you got the uh, 3D printer. Big Bertha's in there with those heat, uh, heated pads, heated uh, the heated print deck and it's just pumping out heat right now so you definitely i'm really happy that we got the new air air conditioner heat pump thing in there because it's it's doing its job oh this feels so good oh make the head cold nice so it's going to take me uh, a few days to get all the prints and everything done here. Uh, so probably next time I, I tackle this, I'll start working on plumbing and all those types of things. But at the very beginning of this video, you saw that I brought something in uh, to the shop here. And let's go over and let me tell you what that is. Well, I think anyone who's been following around the channel knows that we had our initial shipment come from Texas and there were some quite a few mistakes in it. The company that was taking care of this has done absolutely right by me. They have spent a tremendous amount of time talking to me, going over drawings and making sure that they made it all right. And they did. This is all the missing metal um, or miscut metal that we received. This is all stainless steel. I'm not going to unpack it in this video, but probably in tomorrow's video, I'm going to come out here and we're going to start unpacking this thing. And we're actually going to start fabricating grow towers as we get the grow walls printed and everything. So we got a lot of stuff going on here as we get these consumer products uh, brought up to speed. Uh, I got to think through the sequence of events, uh, get from re-familiarize myself with the drawings, figure out what steps I want to do when, uh, and then we're going to tear into this thing and actually start fabricating. So we need to do some practice welds with stainless steel. Luckily, it's really cool outside, so welding is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> but it'll be cool seeing it all come together and we'll start lining them up here in the shop and bringing these things to life just like what we're doing with the grow walls and then we'll start testing everything. Uh, you might be wondering why stainless steel. Uh, I've talked about it before in videos but if you're brand new to the channel or if you just forgot, the reason why is it's easier for us to fabricate in stainless steel than it is almost any other material. Uh, it's food safe. Uh, we can weld it, we can cut it, we can change it if we mess up. Whereas if we went right off the bat with uh, plastics, molded plastics, uh, the grow towers are too big for even Big Bertha. It would not be economical to do that. So we have um, stainless steel as our Mark I. If you've watched Iron Man, you know that his very first one that he actually, his first Iron Man suit, uh, the Mark I, not, the, not, not his prototype. Uh, although this might be more like a prototype. But anyway, his uh, Mark I suit was uh, nice shiny steel, right? Uh, or, well, it would have been a cool fake material that was really light and really strong and bulletproof and all that stuff. But hey, uh, ours is going to be stainless steel. So our Mark I will be stainless steel. And Mark II will start to replace that stainless steel, which much more affordable uh, materials, probably injection molding uh, with high density polyethylene. That would be my guess. So. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, kind of putzing along here, trying to get all this stuff put together. I'm happy with how everything's turning out. We got all the hay brought in. I need to go to this barn, but I still have another probably two days worth of hay work to do. Uh, this morning, I put away the last 60 bales up on our rafters or up in our hayloft. And uh, I got another 280 to do over at the guy where I buy it from and put it in the barn for the winter and for next year. So. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. And if you really like what we're doing, you really want to be part of this adventure here as we start getting into the consumer products for our eating grow systems, uh, join me on Patreon. For less than a cost of a candy bar per month, you can be part of all this. So 
Thanks again, everybody, for following along. This is The Real Martian, out.